Yes, this is hilarious. <laughs> no pun intended. So this lady called Hilaria Baldwin, um, who I had no idea who she was prior to this whole um, controversy online, um, happens to be the wife of Alec Baldwin, right? Who kind of has gained a sort of third, fifth, eighth, tenth wind uh, during the Trump presidency because he does essentially the crappy impressions of Trump during Saturday Night Live, SNL. If you guys are not familiar with it, a little comedy sketch show thing. He usually plays Trump in that. And um, yeah, I guess she just, she's... I don't know this guy's wife she's pretty well known I guess in the states but I'm not really that familiar with her but this story broke all over social and people have been going absolutely nuts over it and it's really really hilarious because um I never knew this was a thing um and um it's also kind of interesting to see what kind of um you know textbook elites rich and famous people who don't have any real obstacles and have struggles in their life will do in order to seem somewhat normal or somewhat regular right because if there's a lot of that right a lot of these sort of like highfalutin white women who have never had to struggle a day in their life wanting to appear quirky so that they got a personality so like oh you know i'm not just rich i'm also got a personality i'm also into these crazy things i also like to do these ridiculous things i also have this weird habit that this is what ticks you know what i mean you're sort of kind of constructing a personality for yourself in order to make yourself far more interesting than what you actually are and you know for the most part it's harmless right you see those Emma Chamberlain type girls. They essentially, you know, um, spawned loads of clones of her. Is this all over the places, right? Scrunch on the wrist, massive flask, talking endlessly about their anxiety and star signs and boys and all that nonsense. It can be pretty harmless, but in some sh in some aspects, especially when it pertains to adults, especially when it pertains to sort of quasi socialites or mum, you know, uh, stay at home mums, it can be very, very, very dangerous. The, the delusion can be very, very real, and this is one of these examples. So it's from the BBC. It says the following. Hilaria Baldwin denies faking Spanish heritage. Right? Absolutely hilarious article, right? Let's go. Oh, no, it's moving it. Come on, let's move it back. <laughs> it says Hilaria Baldwin, podcaster and wife of the actor Alec Baldwin, has responded to claims that she misled the public about her Spanish heritage. Miss Baldwin, a popular yoga instructor, has been accused of social media of faking a Spanish accent. Again, how popular is she really? These some of these articles they they kind of gas up the people a little bit, innit? A popular yoga instructor, how popular is she really? She's popular, of course, because she's Alec Baldwin's wife, right? And she's a rather attractive older lady. But is she a, is she a really a popular yoga instructor? Really? Is she really you know doing numbers in the in the in the uh, yoga teaching um, world? Is she is does her name ring really in that industry? Come on, let's be serious. Anyway, it continues. In a seven minute video on, on Instagram, Ms. Baldwin said she was born in Boston but was partly raised in Spain. However, her management biography on her states um, that she was born in the Spanish island of Mallorca, which is super funny because, you know, she speaks Spanish fluently. But, you know, if you know anything about Spain, you'll know that if she's from Mallorca, then she should be able to speak Basque, which she doesn't have. She doesn't. Right? She's not made any indication that she can speak Catalan or in any way, shape or form. She's just, you know, existing with the Spanish. <laughs> So she also previously claimed the interview that she did not move to the United States until she was 19 to attend university in New York, which is a complete lie. She said, I've seen chat online questioning my identity and culture, Miss Baldwin wrote. This is something I take very seriously. And for those who are asking, I'll retake my story as I've done many times before. I was born in Boston and grew up spending my time with my family between Massachusetts and Spain. My parents and siblings live in Spain and I chose to live here in the US. We celebrate both cultures in our home. Alec and I are raising our children bilingual just as we as I was raised. Which again is utterly still odd anyway, right? That you'd have I guess celebrating tradition is one thing or cultures, but you would assume a lot of that would come from some sort of tie to the country that you're living in, right? When you wouldn't go, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe people are different. You wouldn't go super, you know, balls to the wall with the whole Spanish cultural thing if you just happen to be an expat, right? It had to be something that tied you to it, whether or not you had a business that you shared with a with a Spanish native, your partner was Spanish, um, you were looking after someone that's Spanish. I don't know, something that actually tied you to the fabric of that country, just as opposed to just living there, right, as somebody would means. That's what essentially it looks like, right? They have means, um, they have the ability to move around, they wanted to give their kids a broader sense of the world, open their horizons, allow them to learn new language, Whatever, right but still is that enough to kind of throw yourself 
fully into the Spanish thing and celebrate the cultures and make it seem as if your siblings are from there when they just live there, just like you have lived in the United States. That's a bit strange, but hey, we could digress. Miss Bolton explained that her accent can change because she regularly switches between Spanish and English, adding that she mixes in the two of them when she gets nervous or upset. She said in the video that she had grown up using the name Hillary in the US and Hilaria in Spain before later con con consolidating on the Hilaria, which is again another bullshit excuse. Her name is Hillary, and somehow she convinced herself that you know Hilaria is the um is the one for one translation of Hillary in Spain, which is not right. It's it's a little bit more complex than that, as you would probably you know led yourself to believe. And um, you can't just take a name and just try and put in Dracul translate and think yeah that's the exact same thing. It doesn't work like that. But regardless, even if that's the case, right? As a grown adult, she gave herself. It's all like people. I always, I'm always, 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 always skeptical of people, adults especially, who give themselves nicknames, right? Who um just just for the sake of it because there's always something a little bit mentally unwell with somebody that does that there's always some sort of a delusion um borderline borderline personality disorder right bpd that going on in there that would allow a grown-up to decide to give themselves a, a, a kind of a nickname that you should that you know more often than not comes through experience and living life as an adolescent it just kind of gets you know it kind of gets bestowed upon you and more often than not it's not a nickname that you actually like it's something that you sort of endears you to a group of people that are, might have been bullying you for the best part of three years so you're just happy that they just, they just stop punching you in the face but it's not exactly something that you kind of tattoo on yourself it's just something that you your friends who have known you for most of your life sort of you know um endearly call you by but it's not something that you sort of pin your high identity on so that's why it makes it utterly bizarre and also the fact that your name is Hillary and you go to Spain and people are calling you Hilaria because that's how their, their accent kind of permits doesn't then mean it's an excuse for you to change your name because I think that's what she said in the video she says that oh when she was going to Spain people called Hilaria when she came back to the US called it Hillary and her documents were all messed up it's like no they weren't you would fill she would fill out her name as Hilaria in one place and Hillary in another place so that she then decided okay my name is Hillary Still, it makes no sense. It's just absolutely baloney, isn't it? <laughs> it continues, says, suspicion started to rise after claims about her heritage went viral on social media. A video of Miss Bolden asking how to say cucumber in English also appeared to wacky circuited. So I'm going to I'm gonna put that up here on screen because I think that is quite possibly one of the most funniest things I've ever seen. But it's also not that uncommon. I remember when I was growing up in school, especially um, prior to this whole renaissance of you know uh black entertainment and just you know uh black self-love that's happening here in the uk which is beautiful to see there was this weird thing with africans and caribbeans where somehow africans felt i don't know um less than when it came to caribbeans well i guess because caribbean culture at that time had been embraced a lot more than african culture um and there'll be a lot of people who kind of said that they were quarter dominican trinidadian jamaican whatever it may be just so that they could um you know just so they could kind of add some flavor to what they were about no one really wanted to pin their hat and say hey i am this person they wanted to kind of you know just slip around it and not really make it too obvious so I do kind of understand that need. I do kind of understand, um, not that need, that uh, the pressure that comes with all that sort of stuff. But I think when you're somebody of means and you're somebody that's rich and got, you know, access and we're sort of malaki and you've got the ability to maneuver and reward as you please, this kind of weird thing of wanting to appear like a regular schmegular and then co-opting an entire culture identity so it can bolster your image is just utterly utterly insane and here's the thread right here on um on twitter that blew everything up right this random person i don't even know if this is an actual it seems like a human right um elena ilna alana alina ilana not whatever someone yet yeah? it says and they are what a finance professional living in brooklyn so they tweeted the following he said you have to admire hilaria baldwin's commitment to her um, decade-long grift where she impersonates a spanish person so she i guess this person was just bored on december 21st sitting in their apartment in queens just thought you know what let me give it to this, this girl and she had all these clips on deck ready to go first one fake spanish accent debut this woman grew up in massachusetts <laughs> so look at her speaking spanish on a or kind of speaking with a spanish accent during an interview uh, on american television how's married life married life is really nice 
you know, it feels different. It really feels different. But I didn't think it was going to be different, but it feels quite different. What's so. the thing that surprised you the most? Um, I think just the fact that it feels different. You know, I, we, we like to say husband and wife a lot. Yeah. Um, I this is far worse than Rachel Dolezal. Rachel Dolezal's story was, I guess, um, she was she was treated she was treated unfairly African. Now that we've sort of kind of been able to take stock of the situation, when you sort of look at her story and see the amounts of trauma that she'd had to deal deal with, um, dysfunctional family, and the fact that she was kind of you know um, the first time she sort of uh, uh, experienced love in a family setting was happened to be with a black family in the US. It made complete sense why she'd want to. Um, identify herself with the black culture again how the way she did it was a bit bizarre but in terms of explaining how somebody's trauma can lead them to doing some questionable things and maybe uh, going about it in a very questionable manner that is more um that's something that you could excuse a lot more right than this story than this kind of wealthy well-to-do massachusetts girl deciding that she wants to now be latina because um, it's far more interesting than her middle American upbringing, which it isn't, right? There's no interest. There's no more of, there's no less than whatever it is. Embrace who you are and live your truth. But these people are idiots. There's another clip here. It says, um, here she is pretending not to know how to say a cucumber in English. <laughs> and you see this a lot with, um, who's that girl? Mackenzie Dern, right? The UFC fighter. She's, American, right, for all intents and purposes, but her father is a very well known Brazilian Jiu Jitsu um martial artist. Um of course he's Brazilian, you know, to the core, accent and all, and her mother is Spanish, but she grew up speaking English in America, so she speaks with a regular American accent. Then somehow through the process of learning how to to, to learning jujitsu and going back and forth to brazil she developed this accent where she looks she sounds like english is a second language not a first which is really strange because usually that sort of flip or switch happens in your teenage years right because i remember i've got this one story this girl called rebecca who everyone kind of had a hot spot back in the day when we were in school or we were, yeah we we're in secondary school in the area I remember when she moved to Birmingham, right? And that was a big deal, right? She was like kind of the, the first person in that area under the age of 18 that sort of left London. Like, what the fuck? She lived in London. Why would you leave London for? And of course, all the boys were kind of upset, you know, because they were kind of liked her. They wanted to leave. But I remember when she first came back, it was so weird when she came back like a couple years later. I think she was 18. She must live in 16, come around, 18. And she had a complete Brummy accent. Like, and she's from ends, right? She had a completely brand accent. And we, and we just couldn't figure it out, like, what the hell's going on? How did she have this accent? But then later on, when you grow up, you sort of realize, oh, yeah, she was going through her sort of adolescent maturity sort of stage, kind of, you know, um, where you're sort of kind of figuring out who you are. And at that time, when you're trying to assimilate and you want to just make friends, you are going to, um, you are going to sort of, without realizing, you're going to try your best to um take on everything that's around you in order to to fit in whether that's the accent mannerisms or whatever it may be but it's very unlikely that you would kind of somehow have a brummy accent just because you decide to move to birmingham at the age of 22 it just doesn't make any sense right maybe you use some slang or some words but you wouldn't exactly come out with a completely brum accent just it just seems a bit odd there's another video of her speaking in a regular american accent now um where did your accent go hmm I have recorded this like 20 different times in many different places saying many different things and I think the reason that I'm stressing about it so much is that I'm so passionate about what I'm going to tell you. It's wax lean. Have you ever seen my big fat Greek wedding and you know how the father is like obsessed with Windex? This is my Windex. And it continues here. It says from a review from a podcast, this woman also claimed to have moved to the United States because she went to go in IU. So this is uh, someone, I guess, put in a, a review on the podcast of the following. Hillary needs to stop interrupting. She says, I know Hillary Haywood Thomas, Thomas from Cambridge School of Winston, Massachusetts. She didn't have an accent then and didn't change her name to Hilaria because she's not Spanish. So please stop using an accent on this podcast, interrupting your guests, which is a mad, mad reveal, right? This was, I guess, uh, what was that? October, someone let us review and another clip here where this tweet says the following Hillary's Google results say she was born in Spain, born to a Spanish mother, right? And yet here, here, here we have her very American sounding mother talking about growing up in Massachusetts and Hillary's grandfather was a college professor in 1960s Longmead. So it's not even like she's, um, you know, 
it's not even like she's like faking her own sort of like birthright. It's her entire family history. There's no ounce of Spanish in her whatsoever. She's just a regular American girl who obviously fell in love with Spanish culture, wanted to add a bit of sauce to her life and decided to co-op this entire fake identity. And here's what her mom sounds like. Especially touched to be returning to my alma mater. My father, Charles Hayward, who was the art professor here from 1969 to 1987, is here, as you just heard, as is my mom, Irene, and other good friends from the community where I grew up. They even sound alike isn't it, when they speak English like regularly. Um, next week, and says, um, no, she's not Spanish on her father's side either. Here's a obituary of her grandfather. Her paternity family has been in the United States since it was a British colony. So they're more American than Americans. Uh, it says here, here's her pretending her native language is her Spanish. This is a quote, I guess. This is an article clipping... Um, speaking about Hilarious as the following Hilaria was born in Spain has made certain to raise her children with her native language Spanish she says I speak to them in Spanish Alec does not speak Spanish so he speaks them in English he'll try to he'll try like a little bit and then next year Carmen is going to bilingual school and that's the other shocking part of it her children's names as well Carmen Raphael whatever whatever it's like God almighty woman um, she says I'm excited to put her in an environment where she'll be around children who speak both languages just imagine how traumatizing that must be for your kids i think it's you know it's all well and good being bpd on your own single right it's like i think that's why people don't really maybe that's why some people are like to were tolerating trisha before she kind of decided that or kind of said out loud that she went into family and now she's essentially who's she marrying she's engaged to um healer from hbh3's brother right and people are kind of freaking out that this person's gonna have children i think it's fine to be a little bit of a nutcase on your own because you don't affect anybody but the moment you sort of have a family um kids you know near you people start to get very very worried because that level of um uh mental illness that level of delusion um that level of just uh all over the placedness is not conducive to a stable household so you can just imagine how the kids are dealing with this having you know having their mum being essentially being exposed online as a complete fake like because you can't blame the children for sure they've been told their entire life that they have spanish ancestry right they've been made to speak spanish at home they probably have um i'm assuming central to south american uh nannies that come through who speak spanish to them in the home as well so spanish is particularly perfect and all this bloody malarkey but little do they know their mom's completely faking it the entire time mad in it it says here, but her native language is certainly English because here is her mother's bio, which notes that she graduated from the BU Medical School in 1986 and then she had a 20 year career in Massachusetts. Hillary, Hilaria Hillary was born in 1984. Mum would have been in medical school in Boston. So this whole idea that she went to Spain is completely mute. I forgot to include here the link. Um, and it says here, <laughs> Hilaria has children with the following names Carmen, Gabriela, Rafael, Thomas, Leonardo, Angel, David, Romeo, Alejandro, Eduardo, Paco, Lucas. Jesus Christ. Like, uh, and then of course, Alec Baldwin is there suffering as well with it. And it's just, it's, it's a funny story, man. It really is one of the most hilarious stories that you would ever see. And maybe, um, the the kind of response to it has been interesting too there's been a lack of vit i've seen i've not seen the same level of vitriol that was pointed toward rachel dozo when like i said i mentioned before her story made a lot more sense and there's a lot more pain attached to it you could actually sympathize with her position of how she kind of grew up and why she felt kind of um co-opting a black identity would make sense for her at that particular time but for somebody like a hilaria baldwin right with all the privileges and means that she's had in her entire life to decide oh no i'm actually going to co-opt um, spanish culture and use that as my identity to sort of put my hat on because i don't think i have anything else to offer and somehow dupe my family into believing this lie too that is really unforgivable and I, I, again like I, praise go out to that family man how they're going to deal with this internally because it's both embarrassing and also super debilitating because it's like you know if she's lying about this what else has she's lied about over the years like it just opens up a whole complete can of worms and it's interesting too that she didn't have any like until she got called out as well some of these people man that's, that's what sometimes people say you know some people are like oh when somebody rich 
or somebody wealthy does something you know um objectively evil people are like oh they're not gonna sleep well at night it's like no they will they sleep like babies they have no remorse they have no um re they have no sort of not re they have no sort of regret they have no shame zero because this lady knew all this time because again i have no idea who hilario gomez or sorry hilario bolden gomez was prior to this but the noise the kind of chatter in the industry in the scene was you know pretty loud people were speaking about this openly sort of like the same sort of thing people do in a black community with sean king right people don't believe he's black so it's not like he or she doesn't know people are saying these things they just choose to ignore it and just keep on keeping on but imagine knowing well you know within yourself that you are not the person that you paint yourself out to be but she was very clever too because i think in, in none of the documents i've found so far did she specifically say that she was born in spain she just kind of alluded to it she let people kind of interpret that she let people sort of fill in the blanks but she didn't um correct them in any way shape or form so that, i think that's a clever part of it but again it does show a very manipulative and conniving and somewhat dangerous person that they could keep and lie like this up for what the best part of 30 plus years whilst having five kids with a guy who is under the illusion that you are spanish as well like it's absolutely heinous really really heinous again i guess the benefit is that the kids get to learn a new language regardless right they're never going to lose spanish so i think that's great um you know and being i think you know americans for the most part are well regarded as probably the less um cultured of uh our global populace out there so it is a good thing that these kids from wealthy backgrounds have essentially been exposed to it's a whole entire different culture and be able to see a completely different side of the world even though it's probably the same sort of um wealth bracket because i'm sure they're not staying in random airbnbs when they're going out to her home <laughs> in mallorca but god damn it man this must be embarrassing to kind of you know especially for all those especially if you watch them uh the undoing you'd know how clicky those little schools and um can be especially those little private schools with all the uh, middle uh, upper class families and parents coming off the school and you just imagine all the gossip that's kind of occurring on the playground now with this issue or it or over zoom or over the facebook groups and stuff this is utterly 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 insane um, but big up Hilaria Bolden, man. I wonder now if this should be exposed, if she'll go back to calling herself Hillary or if she'll just keep the name Hilaria. And I like how she kind of purposely, um, you know, adopted this look where she had the dark hair, um, the sort of paley, olivey, pasty skin, the... <laughs> <laughs> the way she spoke and shit like this lady is absolutely batshit crazy and her apology was even worse as well um quite possibly maybe the worst apology of all time <laughs> but hey what do i know